Hi and welcome. In this video, I will discuss certain networking protocols including their operations and uh, their security and these protocols are reverse address resolution protocol, bootstrap protocol, dynamic host configuration protocol, address resolution protocol. And I will also discuss the attacks uh, against these protocols including rogue DHCP server and ARP spoofing or ARP poisoning. And I will also discuss the countermeasures against these attacks including DHCP snooping and dynamic ARP inspection. And I will discuss all these uh, details in this single slide which is reflected on the screen. So let's start. In the earlier days of networking, uh, the endpoints were assigned IP addresses in a manual uh, way. Uh, so there were so many overheads involved with this process and moreover, uh, this mechanism was not viable uh, and scalable for larger networks with thousands of endpoints. Therefore, we needed an automated uh, management of IP addresses and we needed certain protocols to address this issue. So the re reverse address resolution protocol was introduced in 1984 for diskless Unix workstations where upon booting up these workstations request an IP ag address against their MAC address. Moreover, they also requested uh, the IP address of uh, the server where the boot image was uh, hosted so that they can load this boot image uh, for their diskless operating system. So this process was also not perfect uh, since it required the administrator to manually enter the MAC addresses of the diskless Unix uh, endpoints. And moreover, it also required that uh, the reverse address resolution protocol server uh, should be on the same local area network. And therefore, this was not a viable solution for larger networks with thousands of different uh, subnets. Since uh, the server was uh, required on the same subnet where the uh, whole, uh, endpoint was located. So the bootstrap protocol or boot P was introduced in 1985 as a successor to reverse address resolution protocol. And it uh, mainly introduced the concept of relay agent uh, which uh, can be used to locate the boot P server even if it is not on the same local area network. So this relay agent was uh, used to obtain uh, the IP address from the DHCP uh, server on the behalf of the endpoint. So this uh, protocol used uh, the UDP port 67 for the server and UDP port 68 for the requesting client. So upon uh, booting up the boot P was used to obtain the IP address for uh, the endpoint and also its gateway and uh, the location of the boot P server and the location or the IP of the uh, DHCP server for the endpoint. But there were also uh, certain issues with this protocol and the major one was that uh, this protocol was static and there was no concept of least time uh, for the IP addresses and IP addresses were not uh, dynamically allocated and released as per the requirement. So the dynamic host configuration protocol was introduced around 1985 and the main uh, feature was that it dynamically allocated and then reclaimed back the IP addresses assigned to the endpoints. So the concept of IP address lease time was introduced. So it also included certain 
other networking parameters uh, for the endpoint. So it provided uh, the domain name and the domain and NTP server IPs and the least time uh, to the requesting client. And uh, this uh, DHCP also operated on UDP port 67 and UDP port uh, 68 for the client. And for the server, the port was UDP uh, port 67. And the UDP protocol operates at uh, layer 4 of OSI model and it is connectionless. So uh, this is the operations of uh, DHCP. So this endpoint wants to communicate to the internet using this switch or this router. So this switch or this router can have local DHCP server uh, service running on it or it can have a relay agent which can uh, relay the DHCP request uh, to the DHCP server on the behalf of client. So uh, both scenarios are possible. So the endpoint first, uh, uh, actually this is the combination of four uh, messages of DHCP and the first message is the discover message which is actually a broadcast. So the client broadcast uh, the, its MAC address uh, in order to find uh, the DHCP server. So the router then uh, forward this broadcast uh, to all DHCP servers or to a specific DHCP server depending upon the configurations. Then uh, all the DHCP servers available uh, can offer uh, an IP to the uh, endpoint or a specific server can offer the endpoint uh, this IP address and other networking parameters including the gateway, the uh, subnet mask, uh, the boot PIP uh, and the DHCP IP and other information and the least time. So these all informations are then offered uh, to the endpoint by the DHCP server using the port of the endpoint that is the destination port 68. So the client will communicate with the server using the destination port 67 of the server and its source port would be 68. Then after receiving uh, the DHCP offer, the client will then request uh, uh, the IP address from any one of the DHCP server and rest, uh, then it will unicast this information to the DHCP so that DHCP server can acknowledge it and reserve this IP for this client. And the other DHCP server uh, will retain back uh, their offered IP address so that they can assign it to the next client. So these are the four messages for DHCP and these messages are also known as DORA that is for discover, offer, request and acknowledge. So after this process is completed, the client will now uh, send an ARP uh, packet to the switch in order to build its ARP cache, which will map the MAC address of the client uh, to the newly acquired IP address, including the VLAN information. So client can now communicate with the internet uh, since it has now acquired its IP address. Now here is the problem. Since this, prob uh, this process uh, does not have any authentication mechanism, therefore any rogue system can connect to the switch and it can uh, offer, send a DHCP offer in response to DHCP broadcast discovery request by the client. So the, uh, it can then re, uh, cause certain attacks for the client. For example, it can direct client uh, to a black hole where uh, no traffic is existed, existed. Or it can redirect client to a rogue DNS server, uh, which can again redirect client to a rogue website. And then the second attack is that 
which is targeting the DHCP server and the objective is to cause a denial of service attack on the DHCP server uh, by exhausting all the IPs available on the DHCP server. So what attacker will do is that it will in a recursive manner uh, change, uh, change its MAC addresses and generates many DHCP requests in order to obtain many DHCP uh, IPs from uh, to exhaust the IP pool of the DHCP server. So the third attack is the ARP spoofing attack where uh, the this uh, hacker or the rogue uh, system will claim or will send an ARP uh, packet to the router by declaring uh, that this specific IP address maps to a fake MAC address of its own choosing so that all the traffic which is uh, uh, destined to a specific IP address will be routed through this rogue system. So by declaring this, it will then change, uh, poison the ARP cache which was earlier pointed to the original MAC address. So in instead of a original MAC address, now this MAC address will be replaced with the MAC address of uh, the rogue system so all the traffic which will be directed to this specific IP will be now forwarded to this rogue system and this rogue system can also forward it uh, to the uh, actual endpoint by monitor monitoring this traffic and therefore this attack is also known as man in the middle attack. So what are the mechanisms in order to protect uh, these kind of attacks. One thing is that we can enable uh, DHCP snooping uh, protection on a specific router where this router will uh, declare certain ports as trusted and certain ports at, as untrusted. So on all the trusted ports uh, the endpoints attached to these two posts, uh, these ports can forward the HCP offer message, whereas all the untrusted ports uh, cannot be used to offer uh, to forward the HCP offer message by the DHCP server. So, if a rogue system is attached to a, an untrusted port, therefore it cannot offer the rogue DHCP offer message to the client. So, by default, all the ports which are in access mode where a, uh, where a traffic from a single VLAN is expected are in untrusted mode and all the ports which are trunk where uh, which can carry traffic of multiple VLANs are uh, in uh, trusted uh, mode for this DHCP snooping. So this DHCP uh, snooping also builds up a table of successful DHCP connections which will contain the IP address and the MAC address and uh, the port and the VLAN ID of or the VLAN interface of a specific against a specific IP and MAC. So after a client is granted uh, an IP by the DHCP server, the this successful uh, completion of this process will be endorsed in this DHCP snooping uh, database. Now the next uh, protection uh, has uh, is linked with this DHCP snooping feature. So this DHCP snooping feature will build up a database of all the DHCP valid interactions between clients and server and later on if any endpoint will uh, forward an ARC packet in order to update the ARP cache of the router, uh, then the if this dynamic ARP inspection feature is enabled on this router, then the router will uh, first compare uh, this ARP packet information with the information which are available in the HCP snooping table. And if uh, the, uh, this is a match, then it can allow this ARP packet to update 
the local art cache of router. Uh, so this was all uh, from my side. Please stay connected uh, to my channel for similar videos. Thank you.